DOE is a systematic approach to planning, conducting and analyzing experiments. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through an example of how to conduct a DOE. While we won't dive into the details just yet, it's more like an overview to give you of the DOE process or showing you what DOE actually is. And the best part is that ChatGPT is going to help us with that. And you can follow along and try it yourself through the link in the video description. When you have clicked on the link, it will lead you to the ChatGPT uh, web app. And it's very simple to start. You just click here on, I would like to perform a DOE. And the GPT will start with the first step that is defining the problem or goal. It's at the beginning of every experimental design that you very clearly should state what it is that you're trying to solve or trying to understand. And in this case, we're looking at a problem where we want to increase the yield of a chemical reaction. And after performing or after defining the, the problem statement, we would like to identify the factors. And here ChatGPT is already suggesting five factors that could potentially affect the yield of a chemical reaction. And that is the temperature where at which the reaction is conducted, then the concentration of reactants, the reaction time or for how long the reaction is allowed to proceed, then we have the catalyst type that is present and also the pH level. To keep it simple, however, we're going to go with the temperature, the catalyst type and the concentration only. And that will lead us to step three, with the, which we already have defined through the pro problem statement itself, choosing the response variable of what we measure. And for now, the yield is just fine as our response variable. The step four after having defined the factors and the response variable is the identification of disturbance variables. And disturbance variables are variables that you're not really interested in studying, but they can affect your result. And again, there's already a list of five potential disturbance variables for our experiment that ChatGPT has provided here. It's the batch of the reactants, which of course can be a disturbance. Then we have the ambient temperature, then the mixing speed, then of course humidity and the operator itself. Um, so these are potential disturbance variables. And you can also now discuss uh, potential strategies to mitigate their impact, such as randomization blocking. But that's something for one of my next, next video. For now, this list is great. And we're going to keep all of these potential disturbance variables constant during our experiment. So we're going to continue with, with that. So step five, designing the experiment. Now that we have identified the factors, the response variables, we considered randomization, blocking, uh, error management in, in general, we can decide for a design plan. And in DOE, there are a lot of different designs, pl design plans that, that you can choose from. For now, to keep it simple, we're going with the full factorial design, which will test all the possible combinations of the factors. And in a full factorial design, you're usually working with two levels, usually expressed as low and high. If you're interested in other design types as well, then you should take a look at my video that is comparing fractional design, full factorial design and central composite design or response surface methodology. But for now, as I said, we're going to stick with the full factorial design and the levels there are also fine. So looks good. And now step six is conducting the experiment. And based on our input, ChatGPT has created the design matrix for full factorial design with three factors and two levels that will result in eight experimental runs. And those are the experimental conditions here. And during the first experiment, the temperature is at its low level and concentration is at its low level and the catalyst type is also at its low level. And we're now going or running through these eight different experiments. We're recording 
the yield for each run and then we're going to look at the results and now you can either upload your own experimental results that you might have or you just go with an example data set that I previously uploaded to, to the GPT here. And you see here that we have the concentration temperature and catalyst type and now also a yield. Uh, so let's visualize the result. And during the visualization process we always start with the main effects. And the main effects, they show the individual impact of each individual factor on the results variable. So here in this plot, we see the effect of temperature on the yield. If we increase the temperature from 100 to 200 degrees, then we see the effect of concentration and we also see the effect that the catalyst has. So from the results that we see here, higher temperature increases the yield higher concentration increases the yield and changing the catalyst A to catalyst B also increases the yield. Now these main effects they are good or interesting to look at but much more interesting actually are the specific interactions that we might have between those factors because sometimes the devil is in, in the detail. So let's look at the interactions. And this will also create us three interaction plots. The first one showing the temperature depending on the level of concentration. And this is already very interesting that although the temperature has a great effect on the yield while the concentration is at the low level, it's actually the opposite when the concentration is at the high level. So not always does the temperature increase the yield. It very much depends on the level of the concentration because if you have the, the catalyst concentration, if that is at the, at the high level, your impact of increasing the temperature will be negative. So you're actually decreasing the yields then. Here we have the effect of the temperature depending on the catalyst type. And here you see that no matter which catalyst type you're using, increasing the temperature will always lead to an increase in yield. So there's no interaction here between the catalyst type and the temperature. The third plot, we have the interaction plot between concentration and catalyst type. And here again, we have an interaction effect that we see. Because for catalyst A, if you increase the concentration, actually the increase in yield is not, not that significant. So you could say that for catalyst A, it doesn't matter at which concentration you're using it. But in contrary for catalyst B, there the effect is very significant and with the higher concentration of catalyst B, you're actually increasing the yield significantly. Now ChatGPT is asking if we would like to perform any additional analysis, but for now that's just fine and we're going to continue with the next step. Which is already the last step, drawing conclusions from your experimental design. So based on the visualizations or interactions that, that you have observed, you can draw conclusions. So which are your optimum parameters and settings. Maybe if there are any further experiments required, that's also a conclusion that, that you can draw that you need additional experiments with maybe additional factors. You might want to fine tune the, the reaction conditions, things like that. So that's what is DOE. So it's a very systematic approach to planning, conducting and analyzing experiments, getting from a problem statement to results that you can use to draw conclusions.